invested as Bible Church and anyone else joining us for our, our devotionals. I really trust that uh, these are blessing you. And I really trust that uh, you are growing and that, uh, yeah, that, that what, what we're sharing is ministering to you. I am continuing in the section that I'm doing about who I am in Christ. And the section at the moment is about acceptance and how we are accepted by the Father. And um, today's verse is really, really interesting. And uh, it's the, the, the tagline, if I can say that, is I am united with the Lord and I am one spirit with Him. And the verse is 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17. And this is what it says. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with Him. Now this is an interesting section because... Paul is, is writing to the Corinthians, and if you know anything about the books of Corinthians or the Corinthians church, they were a church in a mess, <laughs> to say the least. And um, he's busy admonishing them about sexual purity at the moment uh, in this section. And um, I just want to say outright here from the beginning that sexual purity is sex within marriage between a male and a female. Anything else, whether it is the same sex, the same gender, or it's outside of marriage, is considered sin. Sex is designed purely for marriage. I just want to set the record very, very straight there, straight there between a male and a woman. Okay, but now he's dealing with this. Paul is busy dealing with this. And he says, but he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with them. And he's going back to that reference in Genesis 2 verse 24 I think it is where a man and a woman shall a man shall leave his wife or his parents and the two shall become one flesh it's about an intimate union and the point that we're trying to Paul's trying to get across here or and also the fact about us being accepted and who we are in Christ is very simply that we have a covenantal God and that covenantal God is well, that covenant with God is strong regardless of where we are. Let me put it this way. When we sin, we don't leave God at the door. When we sin, we take this God that we are one with spirit in into that sin with us. That's why sexual sin is such a is such a such a strong sin and such a difficult sin and, and it's this is there's so many branches entangled in it it's such a it becomes such a mess is we are taking the one spirit that we have with the lord into that sin but it's also a beautiful sign of acceptance as well because if when we sin god doesn't leave us that means that when we are in the darkest of times and we are struggling the most, He doesn't leave us. And I don't think we fully comprehend the intimacy that we have in Jesus Christ and the, the oneness that we have of being united with Him. I think if we did, many of us would leave a lot of the sins that we commit far behind. In fact, we'd probably leave all sin if we really truly comprehended the intimacy that the Father wants with us. The devil has so twisted us and manipulated our minds that we just don't see it. We don't see how much it's the Father who wants intimacy more than what we want it. He's created us. Like, like this verse says here, but he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. It's what God wants from us. I've written down a few notes here. Because of that, we should strive for holiness in our lives. It should be something that we really work towards. And specifically sexual <laughs> purity. But in all areas of our lives, we should be striving for holiness because we are one with the Lord. He doesn't leave us. <laughs> we don't leave him at the door when we sin. You know, it's not like... It's not like we, we have this part where we say, okay, God, you know what, I'm going to take you off now and uh, I'm going to watch this movie. 
um, and I know it's something that you wouldn't approve of, but that's okay. You're 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 you know you're packed away in the cupboard, and you know when I need you again, I'll I'll take you out. He is with us intimately wherever we go. And like I said, if he is with us in our sin, how much more is he with us when we go through our hard times and our tough times? And the devil is so good at at lying to us. And here's some of the lies. One of the lies that he really tells us is sin enough and God will turn his back on you. You know, many of us have been trapped in sin. And we've struggled with sin. I know I've had my struggles as well. And I'm not just talking the occasional sin. I'm talking the sins that really bog us down. And you know what? That, that can be different for different people. There's those sins that just they just seem to drag the life out of us. And you know what? The lie of the enemy is... Firstly, we've got to realize that when we're sinning like that, we're down as it is because there's this, there's this disconnect between us and God. Still His children. He still loves us. But the enemy's lies that when we're down, God's going to kick us aside. You know what? There's, there's so much sin in your life. You call yourself a Christian, but yet you carry on sinning like this. You call yourself a Christian, but those are the thoughts that you have. But you, you don't just have those thoughts every now and then, man. You have these thoughts all the time. You're addicted to this bad thinking. You're addicted to that sin. How can God accept you? God's going to kick you aside. You can already start feeling it. You can already feel that distance between you and God. Just wait. That distance is going to get greater and greater. And these are the lies that the enemy comes with. But here in Corinthians, we can stand on a truth that we are united with Him. One Spirit. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing at all. And we need to stop listening to the lies of the enemy. Here's some truth that we can listen to. I will never leave you or forsake you. He can't because he's united with us in one spirit. That, that is an acceptance that we can't come to grips with because as humans we're fickle. Um, you know, we might have a high level of acceptancy when it comes to, or uh, stickability when it comes to uh, our marriages, where, you know, th there's certain things that we will go the extra distance for in our marriages. And even though people, even though a uh, husband or wife uh, might do something, and I'm not talking anything serious, but just those annoying things, you know, we stick with them through it. If we maybe have a friendship or somebody and that person just keeps on getting into our nerves, getting onto that nerve, getting onto that nerve, you know, we can just we can just slowly but surely cut them off or, or phase them out of our lives. And you know, God isn't like that. <laughs> I think of a, the number of times I've got on his nerves. I think of the number of things that I've done in my life that have gone beyond getting on his nerves. And he doesn't leave us he hasn't left me yet because he is more committed he is in this covenant relationship with us and he is more committed to us and i trust that whatever you're going through today you will not listen to the lie of the enemy god will not kick you aside you are his child you are dearly loved he is one with you we are united with him one in spirit let's pray Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you that you are a promise-keeping God. And you are a covenant God. And Lord, so often we are fickle in our emotions and in how we feel. And I just pray that you would remind us today that, Lord, we are united with you, one in spirit. There is an intimacy there, Lord, that you will not break. And I pray, Lord, that when we're going through the hard times, we would remember that. And I pray, Lord God, that it will also cause us to strive for holiness, to be more like you. That, Lord, we would, we would want to throw aside sin, that we wouldn't run to sin. And then possibly even, Lord, the next time we're confronted with sin, we would remember that we're taking you with us into that sin. And that, Lord God, that would cause us to stop it. 
and to turn our backs on the sin and to choose you. I want to thank you that you've accepted us and I want to thank you that you never let us go. In Jesus' name.